machinery and equipment also will not come free of cost for that also you should make payment that is the sixth step if the sole proprietor is making profit then he gets directly motivated by the success of the enterprise here there is only one person so he has got limited means of finance so to expand he is not having money so obviously it is very difficult for expansion so this is limitation of small proprietor ship hello everyone this is purna chandra faculty department of commerce and management vidyashram the temple of excellence so we are dealing with the subject entrepreneurship development for fifth sem bcom and today will be starting your fourth unit and today will be your first session in fourth unit so fourth unit is basically setting up of a new enterprise so the topics which we'll be dealing today is setting up of a new enterprise that is what are the various steps to start a new startup you want to become an entrepreneur you want to set up a new enterprise that is you either want to manufacture a product and sell or come out with a service so what are the different steps we'll be understanding in today's class and also the various forms of small business so there are basically three different forms of small business which you can start that is your small proprietorship you can also call it as sole proprietorship your partnership and also cooperative societies so we will start the session so first we will understand what is the basic meaning or steps that are included in setting up a new enterprise so to be an entrepreneur a person has to set up an enterprise first and come out with a product or service so no one will come to you and give us money free of cost you will have to exchange it with a product or service so only if you come out with a product or a service you will be able to become an entrepreneur so what do you do to manufacture a product or come out with a service you start an enterprise so that is the basic motto of starting an enterprise and setting up an enterprise has got many formal steps which an entrepreneur has to follow so simply without any registration incorporation or any application you cannot start an enterprise so there are a lot of formal steps which you will have to follow to start an enterprise so right from a business idea to a successful entrepreneur there are a sequence of steps so in today's class we'll be dealing with 15 different steps in which you can start a new enterprise so next steps in setting up of new enterprise so there are 15 different steps we will understand one by one so the first one is decision to be an entrepreneur so you have to decide to be an entrepreneur so without deciding you cannot start a new startup or an enterprise so you have to have a clarity regarding what kind of businessman you have to become so when you have the clarity you decide to be an entrepreneur that is you want to undertake risk you want to invest money you want to manufacture a product sell it and become a successful entrepreneur so you are deciding to be an entrepreneur in the first step so next choosing your form of business organization so there are a lot of business forms which you can choose you can go for small proprietorship or sole proprietor where you will be the owner and you will be the bearer of all risk and you will also enjoy what profit you get and also you can also get into in the form of partnership you can make an agreement and you can start in partnership or you can also come out with an cooperative society that is you choose the form of business this is a second step third one is choose a product choice that is to become an entrepreneur you need not manufacture all the products that are in the market and sell it you can select one product that is according to your advantage or according to your line of operation so for example you got some knowledge regarding clothing you can start your own clothing brand or you got some technical knowledge regarding phones you can come out with your own smartphones or you are interested in automobiles you can come out with your own two wheeler or four wheeler etc so making a product choice so you make a product choice so that you stick on to one product sell it and become successful so after that 
location of the industry so where you are locating the industry is it a metropolitan city or is it a rural area whether the area is an industrial area or a residential area so you should select the location of the industry and the address of the industry so next after that what you do is in the fifth step you prepare a business plan that is how much money you are going to invest how much money you are allocating for the raw materials how much money you have kept aside as a salary for the experts or technicians what are the wages you are going to pay to your employees and what is the break even point and how much return on investment you are expecting in future and what is your projected profit so everything you will plan that is preparation of the business plan so this is the fifth step so in the sixth step sourcing processes that is after your business plan you have to source process there are a lot of processes that happen so you might require machineries or consumables so for that you should source the money then you should also source your raw materials you have to pay the suppliers for the raw materials then machinery and equipment also will not come free of cost for that also you should make payment that is the sixth step after that coming out with good infrastructure like land and building water power supply so these are the basic necessities of any enterprise there should be a building and a land and there should be water good supply of water and power supply is necessary for the operations so next legal aspects so now you have to get it registered incorporated you have to apply to the registrar and after that legal aspects there are lot of things which uh, you have to follow so basically what happens is you have to file moa and aoa that is memorandum of association and articles of association if you are going to start a company so then you get certificate of commencement of business and certificate of incorporation only then you can operate so this is legal aspects so arranging finance and working capital to start business so then what happens after the legal aspects you need finance you either go for personal loans or whatever amount you are having with you so that you can use it and also working capital that is daily requirements of the business like daily wages or miscellaneous expenses that are met that is working capital then human resource obviously you need skilled knowledgeable and competitive workforce so what happens here is you have to select skilled workforce so that they come out with quality products and you can be successful so next production so then you have to get into production activities there are a lot of processes which you have to do that is you have to make use of your raw materials in a optimum way that is optimum utilization of resources using limited resources you should come out with maximum products that is production next pricing so then after the products are produced you will have to fix a price so you have to keep some profit margin and fix the price so that you make profit next marketing then you will have to give publicity to the product you will have to go for advertisements personal selling sales promotion so that is also an important step then paying back loans and profit generation so suppose you have made any loan to start your enterprise so once you are making profit once you are generating the profit then what happens you will have to pay back the loans this is the 14th step next feedback and reporting then you go for feedback that is you get to know what people are having what opinion people are having on the product whether it is positive or negative so if it is positive fine if it is negative then what you do you have to report it and you will have to rectify it so these are the 15 steps that are involved in setting up of a new enterprise so next forms of small organization so these are the three forms where small organization can be set up so they are small proprietorship partnership cooperative societies so we will understand one by one so next small proprietorship 
it can also be called as a sole proprietorship that is here what is the meaning of sole proprietorship so it is sole means only proprietor means owner so here there is only one owner he only carries on the activities he only controls the business and he is the only person who enjoys the profit and if there is any loss he is the only person who is going to bear that loss so it is a form of organization in which there is only one owner of business so that is the meaning of sole proprietorship so is the only recept of all profits and losses so next features of small proprietorship so here single ownership only one owner and no separate legal entity that is the owner is responsible for all the activities and there is no separate legal entity so he is if there is any fraud or anything any criminal activity on behalf of the business then owner will be liable no legal formalities that is there is no necessity for incorporation or registration control and management so here the control and the management of the business is done by only one person that is the sole proprietor then unlimited liability suppose the sole proprietor has taken some loan and he is not able to repay the loan then unlimited liability means his personal assets like his buildings cars can be sold to repay the loan next undivided risk so obviously the risk is undivided because here only one person is responsible for all the risk and secrecy the business secrecy are kept because only one person knows all the transaction of the business the secrets regarding the ingredients of the product etc so these are the features of small proprietorship so we will see the merits of small proprietorship so the first merit is easy formation any individual can easily form a small proprietor business quick decision because there is only one person he need not take the opinion of other people so he can come out with quick decisions secrecy again secrecy is maintained because all the details transaction product details are with only one person next direct motivation here if the sole proprietor is making profit then he gets directly motivated by the success of the enterprise next personal touch so here only one person is the owner so he will be having some kind of personal touch to the business enterprise so that is the advantage so limitations of small proprietorship so what are the different limitations of small proprietorship we will understand limited financial resources since only one person is investing so the maximum which he can invest is how much money he is having on top of that how much loan he will get so there is limitation in financial resources second limited managerial ability so basically what is limited managerial ability that is suppose the sole proprietor has not got good managerial skills then what happens he is the only person who has to manage the activities so he might fail well in managing the activities that is limited managerial ability unlimited liability that is something goes wrong there is huge amount of loss and you are not able to pay the loan that you have borrowed for your small business then your personal assets like your house or land or building can be sold to repay the loss so that is unlimited liability uncertainty so you cannot predict what happens when so if the sole proprietor dies or he goes to jail so that is the end of the business then limited scope for expansion so here there is only one person so he has got limited means of finance so to expand he is not having money so obviously it is very difficult for expansion so this is limitation of small proprietorship so next we go for partnership so how we can start a small business in partnership so basically we will understand what is partnership according to the Indian Partnership Act 1932 partnership is the relation between persons who have agreed to share profits of a business carried on by all or any of them acting for all that is two or more people they come together 
and they make some agreement and they invest their money in the form of capital and whatever profit they get out of the business activities they will share among themselves this is called partnership so here all the partners need not participate in the partnership one can carry on the activities on behalf of all or all the partners can also indulge in business management so we'll understand how so here features there has to be minimum 2 and maximum 50 as per the latest act in the previous act it is also maximum is 20 so you can write both so minimum 2 maximum 20 and there has to be agreement whether it is registered or oral there has to be an agreement for partnership and the basic motive should be profit and sharing of profit so suppose two persons come together both of them will invest 1 lakh each so the total capital is 2 lakhs suppose they make profit of 50,000 so they will share it 50 percent each one that is 25,000 and 25,000 so that depends on the agreement how much profit you are going to share in what ratio so that is the meaning so next decision making and control so what is the meaning of decision making and control so here all the partners will actively take part in decision making and they will all of them will control the business next unlimited liability so what is the meaning of unlimited liability so suppose the partnership firm is in loss then all the personal assets of all the partners can be sold to repay the loan that is unlimited liability next lack of continuity so lack of continuity means suppose after the agreement one partner dies or he goes to the jail so what happens the partnership agreement is null and void that is that is the end of the partnership that is the meaning of lack of continuity principal agent relationship so what is the meaning of this every partner plays double role of an owner and an agent so every partner they are owner at the same time they are also an agent to the partnership that is the meaning so next types of partnership partnership at will so partnership at will is a partnership where two or more persons they come together for example four persons they come together and they make an agreement then they start the activities and suppose after few days one partner he doesn't like the partnership so what he can do he can give notice and he can withdraw himself from the partnership that is partnership at will next particular partnership so particular partnership means what you come up with a partnership and after few days the partnership will only automatically discharge what is the meaning of this so you start a construction you construct apartments two partners come together they construct an apartment so after the apartments have been constructed and sold automatically that is the end of the partnership so that is partnership that is particular partnership now again you want to construct new apartments again you have to come out with new agreement for partnership next general partnership so general partnership means the liability is unlimited and limited partnership that is in limited partnership one person's liability will be limited remaining partners liability will be unlimited that is the meaning so next types of partners so there is active partner so basically who is an active partner he invests money is very active in the business and we call him as an active partner so he controls or manages the activities on a daily basis dormant partner so dormant partner is he will invest capital but he will not take part in the activities such a partner is called dormant partner nominal partner just for namesake he becomes a partner in a particular partnership firm partner by estoppel he is not a partner at all he simply misrepresents to someone else saying that i am the partner of such a partnership firm so he is a person who is doing fraud so we call him as partner by estoppel next partner by holding out so holding out is also not a partner so simply he will misrepresent the partnership firm by telling some name of a partner and he gets some loan or any financial benefits from other institutions like banks such partner we call it as partner by holding out minor partner that is 
any partner below the age of 18 we call them as minor partner secret partner so secret partner will invest capital and he will take the profit but what happens is his name will not be mentioned as a partner so there is secrecy maintained regarding this partner no one knows that he is a partner of such a partnership firm next quasi partner so quasi partner is a partner who has retired from the partnership but still his capital is there in the partnership firm so he is called a quasi partner so these are the different types of partners so next we go for cooperative societies so basically what is cooperative societies that is cooperative means working together and with others for a common purpose so the basic motto here is not money they want to help their members financially so cooperative society means a voluntary organization so what is the meaning of a voluntary organization means they are not having profit motive they come together voluntary on their own with their own initiative to help each other that is the meaning it is established by some persons on the basis of cooperative and equality to safeguard the common economic interest suppose some people inside the cooperative society they need credit or they need raw materials at reasonable price or they need tools at reasonable price so machineries at reasonable price so cooperative societies will help them so that is the meaning so here features of cooperative societies we'll understand so here voluntary membership of minimum 10, 10 as adults with common goal so there has to be minimum 10 adults who have come on their own with common goals you can start a cooperative society so there has to be legal status that is you have to incorporate or you have to get it registered limited liability that is suppose there is a loan or any fraud that happens then the personal assets of the members of the cooperative society cannot be sold to repay the loan that is the meaning controlled by managing committee elected by members through voting so obviously there has to be some board of directors who has to control the cooperative society because here minimum is 10 maximum is unlimited there will be 10,000 20,000 etc so to monitor them there has to be a managing committee and this managing committee will be elected by voting of the members so next service motto motive is to serve its members and not to maximize profit so they will make profit but they will not use the profit for personal use they will help the other members so here there is a service motive not the profit motive then cash trading it sells the goods on the basis of cash and never goes for credit sales so cooperative society never goes for credit sales what is credit sales you take the product now you give the money after few days here you keep the cash and you take the products that is cash trading next government control have to provide annual report and accounts to the government so cooperative societies are controlled and monitored by government so anytime government officials can come and they can ask the annual report and the accounts that is what is the transaction details what are the products you are producing so what is your balance sheet everything can be enquired by the government officials next arrangement of finance they arrange finance from sale of shares to members and obtain loan from government so they provide shares to the members and get money and also they will get some loan from the government at low interest rates that is arrangement of finance of cooperative societies so next types of cooperative societies so there are various cooperative societies so we will understand these many consumer cooperative society what does it do it provides daily consumption goods like dairy groceries etc at prices that are less than the market price to the members that is consumer producer cooperative society so suppose some members of the cooperative society are into manufacturing a product they will provide equipment tools etc at prices that are that is less than the market price next 
marketing cooperative society they help in marketing the products of the members of the cooperative society like advertising transportation warehousing so they will help in these kind of things farmers cooperative society so farmers they pool in their land suppose 10 farmers each of them are having one one acre of land so they come together they pool the land now it is 10 acres they grow something in those 10 acres and they will sell so this is called farmers cooperative society then co credit cooperative society so basically credit cooperative society means they don't want the members to be exploited by private money lenders so what they do they give credit to the members at 0% interest rate or very less interest rate that is credit cooperative society and finally cooperative housing society what does this do cooperative housing society basically what it does is it will help the members to apply for a site or a house and help them to get a house so that is credit cooperative society so with this we are done with today's session so in the tomorrow session we will be understanding what is project formulation and also what is project report. Thank you.